bunch of stuff from Nikon. Let's talk a little about CES, some things you need to know about Narbox, Canon's getting meta, and some Instagram changes. Bunch of stuff, first one of the year. Come on, let's go. What's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here. This is Adorama Rewind and it's the first one for the year. So welcome back. It's been a minute, so hopefully I'm not too rusty, but uh, let's just jump into some good news. So Nikon Z9 started shipping. I got mine. A bunch of people I know got theirs that were NPS members who registered their order with NPS uh, at the time of pre-order. And if you didn't get it yet and you were registered by the cutoff date for when they promised to get it, you probably got a letter like this that said, hey, we're shipping them out now. And a lot of people I know are showing screenshots of uh, them actually confirming their actual unit allocation has been shipped. So that's pretty great. That means that Nikon's staying true to the commitment of getting all the registered NPS orders from the pre-order out to people by mid-January. So that seems pretty good. Uh, there also seems to have been a hardcore rumor about them not filling orders till October of this year, which seems to have been a little crazy. And I'm gonna kind of dismiss a bunch of it right now. Uh, this was put out there by a Japanese retailer. It was translated. People don't realize that retailers will look at how many they get on average as a stock and then go by that as how they can allocate their orders. So let's say they think they're only getting 100 a month and they have 400 pre-orders. Well, they're gonna say, well, in four months, five months, you're gonna get yours. So what really actually is happening, Nikon has said to me at least, that they are committed to 3,500 units per month. So I don't think it's realistic to say that there's gonna be none shipped till October for anyone that's not NPS, but we'll see, right? I, I'm not saying that any of this is official, but I just, I personally, in my opinion, based on what I know and what I've seen and what's going on, can't really put faith in the idea of them not shipping the Z9 until October. They seem to be fulfilling orders regardless as of right now, but let's see what happens after the NPS orders get filled. Uh, and that seems to be the biggest priority for them right now. So it just seems like Nikon's taking care of professionals that are invested into their system. And you know, rightfully so, right? Brand support goes both ways. It's not just, you know, you support the brand supporting you with the gear you buy, but if you support the brand and they have to allocate things, they kind of go with that first. And I would be behind any outrage if there was a paywall to join NPS, but the only paywall there really is, is the first tier of it is free as long as you own at least two Nikon cameras and two lenses. And if you're a pro, you probably have something along those lines. So the people that need a flagship type camera, it seems kind of minimal, the requirements to be first to get it. And we'll see how fast these ship out anyway to see if there's even that big of a difference, whether it's weeks, months, I can't see it being the year, but who knows? I don't know, but that's just my two cents on it. Hate me down in the comments. I don't know what to tell you guys, uh, but I, I could see a lot of brands going this route that if you are invested into them, they will do the most they can for you. You know, uh, let's go jump over to CES 2022. Wow, uh, that sounded really weird to say. Uh, Nikon actually showcased some robotics technology. So they believe that if they gave the right vision to the robots, they will unlock more of their potential. And it seems so as the case. Check it out. They have developed camera systems that will go on the robot themselves. Right here, you can see that. And it will actually allow them to be super quick and being able to recognize objects down to one millimeter at 500 frames per second and being able to adapt to change so they can be flexible within uh, applications like assembly lines. So this is what they're saying will help out things like the labor shortage and stuff like that. Or let's say we just went through COVID and they couldn't have max capacity inside of a factory. This would be a way for them to still uh, resume production in a way. Uh, should there still be resources, that's another thing. But they really did showcase a lot of things with this, you can actually watch it recognize something and stick with it and how quick it's able to act with it. Or even something like small, tiny LEDs, being able to recognize them and then grab it. I mean, this is a simulation, but you can see where they're going with this. And it's kind of interesting to see stuff like this from Nikon. Uh, and I think it's another discussion to be had where a lot of people don't realize how much bigger these companies are. It seems like common knowledge, but you'd be surprised how many people don't realize that 
all these companies aren't just straight up making you a mirrorless full frame camera. You know, uh, Fujifilm has an incredible medical division. Canon is enormous. Like, of course, Sony. They've made every, I think Sony's actually uh, showed a concept car, an electric car this year at CES. And speaking of CES 2022, let's go check out what my buddy Josh Soleil, who's my co-host at Adorama XP, the Twitch channel for Adorama. He gave you guys a nice breakdown of the best overall product announcements at CES 2022. And he goes through everything. I mean, from the brands to the genres, to the categories, everything in between audio, PCs, gaming, I mean, lifestyle, <laughs> apparently uh, GPS tracking, everything else that you could imagine. So I'm gonna link this down below. I'm not gonna run through it, but it's a pretty in-depth list. And if you just wanted a quick summary to, to nosh on, go check that out. And there's a lot of other great stuff on the Adorama blog. It's called 42 West. Uh, you can find it right through the, the actual Adorama site. If you just go up to the top right here, Adorama blog up top, or you can just go to adorama.com slash 42 West. Let's talk about Canon getting meta. Yeah, um, I had to make that joke. I don't know. It's kind of interesting what they're doing. They put out an announcement that they're developing something called Kokomo. What is that? Well, it's a social VR platform. So what they're basically saying is that they're getting ready for the metaverse, where you can actually use their uh, camera with their, which is basically an R5, R6, or they can even, they even listed the M200 as a compatible camera, and you can use their VR lens, which will then put you in a space virtually with someone you're talking to, and you'll have a real time experience together, so they're saying. I don't know what this is gonna turn into. I don't know how much of a development this will actually be, but this is the lens we talked about a while ago that they developed, and it seems like they're implementing all their technologies and getting ready for what could be to come. I don't know where people stand on this, right? We've been living in Zoom calls and Microsoft Teams and all sorts of stuff like that. And now we're looking at Oculus and, you know, Meta and Metaverse and all this virtual reality stuff. I just think it's kind of smart for Canon to be looking in this direction, showing forward progressive thinking. Should the Metaverse take off, then, you know, it looks like we're headed to more and more virtual platforms, especially the trade shows. I mean, CES was so poorly attended that they ended a day early due to COVID concerns and stuff like that, the cancelization of vendors being there. Uh, and we don't know what the future of trade shows are going to be or events in general. And this could be an easy way for people to have more in-person type meetings as opposed to just a Zoom call with a low res, really gross looking image and some shoddy uh, audio. It just seems like they are gonna make it more of a system for someone who's already a Canon user. But if you think about it, let's say there is a company that is used to flying people around for uh, meetings. They might've moved on to Zoom calls or something like that, but maybe they wanna just get that much more in depth with this type of virtual meeting space. They could kit out a few people, like key people in their company with uh, some Canon cameras, this lens, the software, and just get it going, train their IT department to get it all set up and they're good to go. And Canon could be the ones owning the technology hardware wise for the meta space. I don't know, it's, it's really interesting. Right now it's just an announcement. We've seen a billion announcements and development things never come to fruition, especially things that happen at CES. They're just kind of people flexing their creative uh, ideas and just seeing what, what bites and what people think about it. You know, they're looking at the response and feedback. Razor is famous for that and all sorts of stuff. So let me know down below what you think about this. Um, I, I will say I, I have to applaud them in making it at an accessible price point going all the way down to the M200 as a camera that's easily accessible to and get going instead of buying like a $4,000 R5 plus the camera. But if you already own the R5 and all that, you know, that's what I'm saying. It just seems like a really good idea for people that are already in the Canon uh, ecosystem or they did come up with uh, compatibility for people or companies rather that would have to kit out people at a cost effective, you know, price range. All right, let's go talk about Narbox. So this was kind of surprising. Uh, Narbox original team has left the assets in the hands of the investors. Now, what the problem is, is stuff like this, where the app wasn't installing, the new app wasn't on the US app store for iOS, uh, and a lot of people that own Narbox, that are invested in Narbox, were left kind of hanging. And in fact, if you go to Narbox's website, this is what you get. Uh, the fate of Narbox doesn't seem to be, um, 
sealed. They are they are showing some levels of support, but they do also seem very quiet as far as customer support goes. And when people are asking and inquiring and seeing what they can do to fix the situation they're in, but they do seem to be trying to get their app back on the Apple Store and jump back on there on January 4th. But the fact that it disappeared for a moment, the fact that no one's really saying anything, and the fact that their website's down, uh, I'm just letting anyone out there that's already invested in the Narbox, uh, you know, system, hold tight, maybe not look to update things. Uh, if it's working, don't mess with it. If you're looking for updates, you might have to keep on checking back with Narbox to see if there's any movement on that, their Twitter page, all sorts of stuff like that. So uh, I just thought this was something you guys should know about if you're a Narbox user. And if you don't know what Narbox is, it was pretty much a really rugged external hard drive that you would be able to back up all your data in the field without needing a laptop. So if you did some video, you could get it over onto that drive and not have to worry about it so much, you know, out there in the wilderness if you didn't want to take it with you just for backup purposes and stuff like that. There's also a lot of cool stuff in the app. You were able to edit some things. I'm not gonna jump down that, but if uh, just, just be aware of this situation with this company right now. We'll keep an eye on it. Hopefully it fixes. Let's talk about something really cool. So a museum in Amsterdam, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this. I'll put the link down below and I hope you guys visit it because it's really cool. You get to go visit the paintings virtually. They did a 717 gigapixel photo of Rembrandt's paintings for you to go check out. What am I talking about? Well, if you go over to their site, you can check out this Rembrandt painting really easily by just scrolling in and scrolling in and scrolling in and check this out. Like it just doesn't stop and you can reposition, but you can actually see the depths of every crack. Like look at these specs, look at this. It's like you're walking right up to it. It's insane. So what's basically happened here is that the distance between these two pixels on this high resolution image is basically smaller than a human red blood cell, they're saying. That's what they're listing, and you can keep zooming out and panning over, and you can zoom in and check out all the detail in this and see all the cracks in the paint. I mean, the precision on this is incredible. If you wanna know, this was shot with a Hasselblad 100 megapixel H6D, but it's a multi-shot. So it's a lot of shots done with a, uh, with a multi-shot Hasselblad 100 megapixel medium format back, and it, they stitch it together and you get this hyper, hyper resolution. What's really cool is that even though it is a 5.6 terabyte sized file, you can just go online and just scroll around it and sink your, your eyeballs into it as much as you, I mean, look at this. Look at this, how eerie and creepy is that? But it's just amazing what we're able to see. It's, it's just, I just think it's awesome. And if you're someone that's at home working all the time and you just need like a quick break, hit that link up, go check out some paintings, breathe a little bit, you know, put some music on maybe, you know, and uh, just enjoy being able to walk up to a painting and see all that detail. Really awesome. I love when they do this type of stuff. I really love super accessible stuff like this. And it's really cool to see like high resolution images being utilized in a certain way. So I'm wondering if like, eventually we can evolve this type of application of resolution to things like maybe Instagram, right? Maybe instead of zooming in and getting like garbage resolution, maybe one day we will get to a level of technology that's so fast and cost effective and easy to access that you could put up a full resolution image and just keep on zooming in and seeing every little detail on it. I don't know, I mean, why not, right? You know, things progress, things evolve, I don't know. Speaking of Instagram, it looks like they're gonna be bringing back the chronological feed. So if you don't know this, uh, a long time ago, kids, Instagram was chronological, meaning whatever was posted at that time is when you got to see it. So if I posted something at 12 noon and you follow me and you got on Instagram at that moment, you would see it right there, 12 noon. And you would scroll through and it would be in succession of what was posted you know, in chronological order. Well they took that away and they gave us their own algorithmic feed, which was them basically saying, hey, you're not seeing everything because unless you're on Instagram 24 seven, you're not gonna see it all. So we're gonna serve things up that we think you're gonna like from the people you follow. And you might see things that were three days old and stuff like that. And some people hated it. Some people like the way it is now. Well, it looks like they're bringing it back. Yeah, so check this out. They seem to be trying out three different categories. What's gonna happen here is you're gonna have home, following and favorites. Home is basically going to be your Instagram that you know now, just with more suggested feeds. So instead of the things you just only follow, it'll bring up an algorithmic 
basically like a, a real-time discover page, I guess, of just serving you up uh, things from people you follow as well as uh, stuff they think you'll want to see. The one under that following is going to be the chronological based on who you're following. So if you follow, you know, 100 people, those 100 people will be in that following tab and you will see what they posted in chronological order based on when they posted and when you logged into it. And then there's favorites where you can just go right over to not just everyone you're following, but who you want to like bookmark as a favorite. And you can just go in there and maybe you only want to check in on, you know, five people who are close family members instead of, you know, 3,000 things you follow. Like I follow way too many people and way too many things. So I'm just like, ah, oh, follow, I'll stay up on it. And I never see them again because Instagram doesn't serve it up to me. Or one of the things I always hated was if there was like a holiday and people posted images from that and you're like five days later and Instagram's still serving up stuff that they think you didn't see. So you've got people like decorating Christmas trees, light menorahs, and you're like, all right, we're already in like middle of January. What's going on here? So it, it, I'm kind of welcoming the chronological bring coming back. It's also really cool uh, feature if you follow things like certain art galleries or uh, things that post about events. If you know something's going on and you're afraid you're going to miss it in real life or something like that, you can actually plug into the chronological and stay up on what's going on. Or if people post about promos for events, you no longer see it after the fact, which happens more often than you'd think. So there's uh, use case for both, but I just think it's really awesome that we, the user, get to plug into whichever one we want on the fly. It's no longer like, it's only this. So let me know down below, do you prefer the Instagram algorithm we have now, which a lot of people seem to be having trouble being discovered by or getting any sort of engagement from their following? Or are you psyched for the chronological because you're more of an of the moment type person and you use it as like a beacon kind of thing? Let me know down below what you think about that. And on the topic of Instagram, I'm gonna bring it back to the shout of the week and I'm gonna give it out to this guy, Alan Johnstone. I see him all the time in the Adorama chats and in all the Adorama comments and stuff like that. So check him out. He's shooting a lot of wildlife and some scenic stuff. Uh, really nice stuff to have on your feed if you wanna grab it. And uh, very, very active in the virtual Adorama community from Canada. So go give them a follow and let's close it out with question of the week. I mean, let's do an easy one, right? It's the beginning of the year and I know next week alone or this week I should say there's gonna be some some announcements, so, you know, stay tuned to Adorama TV. You might wanna pay close attention. But let me know what you guys are psyched for as releases for 2022. What is the equipment you're hoping to see? What is the stuff that you've been hearing out for a while and hoping to come out? Uh, what are you looking for out of 2022 as far as the new releases go? Hit me down below, and while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, share the video around, hit subscribe, and also hit the bell so you get notified when Adorama puts out videos and you don't miss them. But I'll see you down in those comments. Take care of each other. Later. Peace. What's going on, everyone? Seth Miranda here. That was a weak, weak clap. Oh, rusty.